Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to learn about S3 security as well as encryption. So we learned in the last lecture that by default, all uh, buckets when we create them are private and that was those four little check boxes. Uh, and you can set up access uh, control to your buckets using bucket policies and access control lists. Now bucket policies work at a bucket level, whereas access control lists go all the way down to individual objects. And S3 buckets can be configured to create access logs, which logs all the requests made to your S3 bucket. So if someone tries to access an object, that is going to be logged. And this can be sent to another bucket or even another bucket in another account. So if you want to log um, who's accessing your objects in your S3 bucket, you can definitely do that. And you can store those logs in an S3 bucket in your primary AWS account, or you can actually set it up in a different AWS account. And so uh, this is really really, really important to understand the two different types of encryption because you will be tested on this in the exam. So there's encryption in transit. Now, you, whenever you go and visit a website, if you're going to HTTPS, it means that the traffic is going to be encrypted in transit. So basically between um, your computer and the server, that traffic is encrypted. No one who's eavesdropping on that will be able to break it and understand what you're looking at. That's why we use HTTPS. So encryption in transit is always achieved by SSL or TLS as it's also uh, referred to. So that's whenever you're browsing using HTTPS, that is encryption at transit. Encryption at rest is where we encrypt the data that's being stored. So let's say we have a Word document that's being stored on a hard disk drive. If there's no encryption at rest and somebody steals that hard disk drive, they will be able to access that Word document. So I'm talking about encryption at rest in terms of uh, the way it works with S3. There's two different ways that we can do this. We can do it on the server side or we can do it on the client side. The server side is where Amazon help you encrypt the object. And on the client side, it's where you encrypt encrypt the object and then upload it to S3. So let's look at it on the server side and there's three different types. There's S3 managed keys. This is where Amazon managed the keys for you automatically so you don't need to worry about uh, the keys at all. When we talk about keys, a key is just a way of encrypting the object and then decrypting it. So it's just like you would use a key with a lock. So this is where Amazon managed all the keys. Um, so that's S3 managed keys. It's sometimes referred to as SSE S3 which is server side encryption S3. We then have AWS key management service. This is where you and Amazon manage the keys together. Uh, and this is called managed keys server-side encryption with KMS. And then we have server-side encryption with customer provided keys. This is where you actually give Amazon your own keys that you manage uh, and you can encrypt your S3 objects doing that as well. And then, like I said, you can actually encrypt the object yourself on the client side. So you might do this on your, um, your Mac or your PC or whatever, and then you upload that object to S3. So there's four ways of really doing encryption. There's server-side encryption. So we've got SSE S3, SSE KMS, and SSE uh, customer managed keys or customer provided keys. And then we also have encryption using client-side encryption where you basically encrypt the object and then upload it to S3. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we can do this in the AWS console. Okay, so here I am in the AWS Management Console, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Services, and we're going to go over to S3, which is under Storage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our bucket that we created when we first created our bucket. Um, so it's called Ryan and Faye 123456. Let's go ahead in there, and we'll see our two objects that we uh, uploaded. So let's start with reInvent 2019. How can I make this object encrypted? Well, all I have to do is click on it, and if I scroll down, all the way to the bottom, um, we'll be able to see server-side encryption settings. So right now, the default encryption is disabled and there is no server-side encryption. If I go ahead and hit edit, I can um, enable server-side encryption. We have two different types of encryption. So we've got, um, uh, in terms of the key, we've got Amazon S3 key. This is where Amazon manage uh, the key. So they create, manage, and use it for us. AWS KMS, which we'll cover off later on in this course, this is where the encryption key is basically managed by yourself. We're going to use AWS, um, uh, our SSE S3 key, so the Amazon's S3 key, and we're going to go ahead and hit save. And we can now see that that object has now gone ahead and become encrypted. So if we were to do an object overview and scroll down, we'll be able to see um, decryption, uh, default encryption is enabled and it's using an Amazon master key. 
So if we go back over to our bucket, we've got another object in here called Ryan and Faye.jpg. Um, we could go in and encrypt that individually, but that's not really very efficient. What we might want to do is encrypt the entire bucket. So we can do that by clicking on properties, going over to our default encryption and hit edit. And then in here, we're going to enable server side encryption. And we're going to do it using the Amazon S3 key or SSE S3. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. And now every object that we put in this bucket is going to be encrypted because the bucket itself is encrypted. So we've turned on uh, encryption for the entire bucket and we're using the Amazon S3 master key. So going into your exam, just remember that you can encrypt individual objects, but you can also encrypt uh, your objects at a bucket level, which is much more efficient. So that's it for this lecture, everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture. Thank you.